Yes, the Holy Eucharist and specifically uh, the Holy Communion, the sacred host, is not uh, an idea and even is not a sacred thing, but a sacred person, <laughs> even a divine person, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is present really, substantially, and with all his divinity in this little sacred host. And uh, my concern is that, to, that we should be ever more aware and conscious when people approach to receive Holy Communion that here is the Lord of the universe, God in his unending majesty, who humiliated himself so much. It, not only he be incarnated to, this, to, to accept and assume our human nature, but he went even more further he humiliated himself to this uh, state of being in Eucharist, defenseless. And so he, has, he was delivered in our hands. We can make with him what we want. And so I think especially in the moment, the moment of Holy Communion is the moment of the most intimate possible encounter meeting with the Lord in this earth, with our God, incarnated. <coughs> And so, uh, this moment of Holy Communion has to be a very sacred moment. A very, um, we have to pay so, so much attention, to take time. And this moment has to be uh, solemn, sacred. But unfortunately, when I came in the, in the West world, from the experience of the underground church, for my family, for my mother and all, it was a a, a, a great shock and a very great sadness that we noticed that especially the moment of Holy Communion became so superficially, so banal, especially with the form of receiving Holy Communion directly in the hand and touching the Holy Host with the fingers from the palm of your hand and then to put yourself, the Holy Communion, in your mouth. And then all the consequences uh, which are flow from this, I would only say four, which, were, which are evident and which you cannot deny. Firstly, the loss of the fragments, of the little fragments of the host. Mm -hmm. This loss is very big. It is, uh, and so we expose our Lord. In every little fragment is the whole divinity present, real present. Yeah, see, that's a, one important thing uh, to, to, to focus on. Sometimes you, you almost get a s sense that people think if it breaks off, a fragment breaks off from the host, then it's not really the Eucharist anymore. It is. And it is the Eucharist. Because this is a dogma of our faith in the Council of Trent. It is a dogma that in each even little, the most little part of the host is the whole Christ present. And therefore, we, this is a dogma. We have to behave oneself according to our dogma. And in this manner of receiving Holy Communion in hand, with this, we expose our Lord to, the, to the, so a great uh, loss of fragments. So in the, they can be attached on the palm of the hand, in the two fingers. And then between the priest and the communicant, there, there is no plate. It fall all down. Mm -hmm. Even uh, in our country, we have no communion in hand, thanks be to God. And we are using only always a plate, a pattern, a pattern. Mm -hmm. and after even uh, my experience, after each mass, I have some fragments on the pattern. Yes, it's but often when, my experience. But when there is no pattern, like in the communion hand, fall down, mm -hmm. and and so our Lord is crushed by the feet in His church. In so many places, this cannot be. We cannot be. Uh, silent about this and say, okay, we can continue, it is licit, okay, it is legally licit, but we have to reflect upon this mm -hmm. and to, then this is the first very grave consequence, very grave. And if I might just add something uh, from a priest I met who had been in a communist Chinese prison and hosts had been smuggled into him and what he would do is consecrate the, 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 he was given wine and, and bread smuggled by his mother. And he would break off into the tiniest fragments to make sure each priest could receive 
even a fragment yes. of Holy Communion. And this yes. was all, the, and it took years to be able to get that. Yes. And so this was very yes. precious for their yes. experience they, to treat each fragment. Yes. And risk their lives doing it. It's very impressive for this example of you. Then I continue. This was the first grave consequence of this manner of receiving Holy Communion, which is today spread all over the world. And the second one, um, the stealing of the host increasing mm -hmm. in so many countries, really increasing, mm -hmm. astonishing. Yes. And so we expose our Lord to stealing the host. And then the next uh, consequence, objectively I speak. I not speak about the interior attitude of the people who receive Holy Communion in hand, to be clear. I speak on the objective situation. The third consequence is that this form of, of receiving the Lord, the holiest of holy, uh, in this manner, as we have today so, so much uh, spread, standing in the hand and taking with your fingers and so on, uh, here, here is a minimalism, a minimum of uh, gestures of adoration, a minimum. But when this is the holiest of holy, we have to give the maximum it is a logical consequence of our faith. Mm -hmm. And the fourth consequence is that this manner to, to, to put the holiest of holy in the palm of the hand and then to allow that the faithful take with his both fingers himself, the holy host, and puts himself in his mouth, this gesture is very similar to take common food uh, in kitchen, in cafeteria, in your house. You can observe this. And so, we, we have a situation of uh, absence in this manner of um, real, clear, unequivocal, sacred gesture. And so I have, I think we have to reflect very seriously about this. And therefore I, have, I think we have to waken up, wake up, stop, kneel down, adore your Lord. It is logical when the angels in heaven, in the apocalypse, they prostrate in front of the lamp, but we have the lamp of God in the host. They prostrate themselves. We not. Why not? When the angels prostrate themselves in front of the Lord, then these three wise men, the Magi, they came uh, to Bethlehem, and it is written in the Holy Scripture, they made a proskinesis, this is an expression in Greek, of special uh, gesture of adoration, to right. kneel down and to bow with the head unto the earth. Right. And so the three Magi adored the body of Christ in this manner. As a matter of fact, very frequently the Greek and word proskuneo simply means worship. Yes, and why we not? And then the, the three women in the morning of the, uh, of the resurrection of our Lord, when they met the risen Lord, what they did spontaneously, they fell down and kissed the feet and bowed down, adored them. It's also written adored with the gesture of proskinesis mm -hmm. in this case. And so did our fathers, our grandparents. And so this form of receiving and, and honoring our Lord during Holy Communion uh, was kneeling in the Latin rite and receiving the tongue almost more than thousand years and such a pressure tradition, more than thousand years, has no sense to abolish this. Because when it uh, is at stake, the honor of the Lord, we have to try to find maximum of adoration, of cautious, of protection, of defense of Him. Mm -hmm. And not the minimum, but to make a slight bow, it's minimal. Mm -hmm. Why we do minimal? Mm -hmm. We have to do maximum mm -hmm. when it's the Lord. And thanks be to God, our Pope uh, Benedict XVI, already almost five years, give to the whole church an example, a magisterium practical, that he has decided when he gives Holy Communion as Pope, that the people receive from his hands only kneeling and on the tongue. This is a clear sign of the Vicar of Christ on earth. And I think a very clear sign, and we have to, even as faithful, but I speak the bishops in the first place, has, have to um, react positively on this example of our Holy Father. And why not to establish in their diocese the same as the Pope makes? Mm -hmm. It would be logically. <coughs> mm -hmm.
Well, it's um, now on one hand, you know, um, at this point, there is an indult that the uh, I know the American bishops and some of the other bishops conferences, but not all bishops conferences in the world, but some of them, like the Americans, have you know gotten permission to per, to allow communion in the hand. So it's not something that people are doing in disobedience at this stage. Um, they're, they're, they're doing it with that indult. Um, but you're saying, you know, you're more saying let's call ourselves to a greater sense of worship and, and show signs of adoration as we come to receive Holy Communion. Yes, I would say not some conferences, almost all conferences in the world already uh, ask this indult for communion in hand. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Mm -hmm. It is very sad. Yeah. But th the issue is not this. The issue is the arguments. The situation objectively is really problematic. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord at the stake, His honor. Yes. And we have not to, to deal in first with laws or licit. Right. Even it is licit. But if it is showing objectively that this permission is damaging the honor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, so the face. and therefore, I am speaking to help uh, also the, the, uh, the faithful and the brother bishops to, to start to reflect, because the Pope already changed for him. Mm -hmm. This is a sign. Yes. And why not the bishops? Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are speaking about this. We have to start in the church an uh, open discussion about yes. this issue, without uh, taboos. Right. It is, but in the history of the church, there were also some things which were allowed and mm -hmm. licit, mm -hmm. but which after wo were revealed them as damaged. And so I think um, it is time for all the church. And we have to, when we really believe what is the Lord, who is the Lord, who is the sacred host? I say, who is the sacred host? Not what is the sacred host? Who is the sacred host? And when we take the consequence ultimately in the depth of this reality, I cannot imagine that we will be content with this situation of communion in hand and standing. It is impossible. You know, one, uh, two, two things that also strike me. Uh, it became very um, common for people to speak about receiving the bread and the wine and not focusing on the fact that by our faith it is not bread or wine. Yes. It is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that the, that, that the change in substance is, is real, yes. uh, effected by the Holy Spirit yes. coming over the bread and wine, and then the words of Christ spoken by the priest in the person of Christ. You know, this makes a transformation. And I'm, again, beginning to see that people are catching themselves so that there's, you know, th th they became a habit of talking about the bread and wine. And now they're saying, you know, uh, uh, even priests and deacons, uh, and uh, now they're focusing on it's the body and the blood of Christ. And it's that, that this is part of a transition where we're coming back to what this means. Yes, uh, because um, what we believe and what we do or what, how we worship, we, we know it is connected and separately. And so, uh, in the measure what we, how I believe, in this measure I behave also exteriorly. And therefore, on the other side, when I do some exterior behavior, some gestures, continuously, habitually, this has an effect on my interior life, on my uh, thinking. And so, when I continuously uh, uh, um, take the holy, the holiest of holy, like our common food, with this gesture of communion in hand, continuously, then this has an effect by time on me, that it, it is comparable to common food, and therefore they start to speak of bread, holy bread. But we have to, and this is therefore when we um, begin uh, to, to improve these gestures of adoration and of sacredness during Holy Communion, this will be an effect also on the face. Yeah. And it's, 
um, again, something I mentioned at the beginning. You observed how, uh, you know, Muslim clerics, you know, are considered blasphemy. You know, well, you tell the story about the, the, the minister. Yes. I have s once uh, a meeting, an interreligious meeting, and there were several uh, pre uh, representatives of different uh, confessions and religions, and we spoke about the, what is a sacred reality in your religion. Mm -hmm. And the Muslim said, for us the holiest of holy, so he spoke, the holiest of holy is the Quran, the book of Quran. And um, he once observed that a Protestant pastor um, wanted to greet him and took the Quran uh, without washing the hands. And it was for this uh, cleric, for this imam, a blasphemy. He was hurt it in his heart. And he spoke uh, publicly, this is a blasphemy for us Muslims, because to touch the Quran in Arabic, you have to wash the hands, because this is the holiest of holy. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about this man. <coughs> we have the holiest of holy, the Lord, in the sacred host. And when this imam would arrive in a Catholic church in the Western world, where it's common or exclusively communion in hand, and he will observe a line of people going and taking with their fingers, and in a hurry, sometimes it is very hur hurry, fast, mm -hmm. quick. And then he will ask the Catholic, what is this little bread there, this white? And the Catholic will say, this is our God. And he will say, no, it is symbolically our God, your God. No, it is not symbolically. It is really. Christ is present with the substance of his body, blood, and with his divinity. And the Muslim will say, oh, he is present only spiritually in the host, in this bread. And the Catholic will answer, no, not spiritually only, really, substantially. And then the Muslim will say, and so you treat your God, the holiest of holy, mm -hmm. I'm not able to believe that you believe in this. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I think we have to, sometimes today, we have to learn about the, the attitude of uh, reverence of other religions, of other confessions, especially the, the Orthodox. Another example, I have um, a friend, an Orthodox friend, a woman, a very nice, uh, pious lady, and she, uh, the, the Orthodox Church, they give, after the Holy Mass, they distribute holy bread. Right. It is called... It's, it's not, not consecrated. Not consecrated. It's blessed. It is only blessed, antidoron. And they take this in the hand, because it is not the body of Christ. She told me. And uh, this lady had so a reverence to this only blessed bread that once fell down uh, a fragment and she was so weeping that this, uh, this happened. Yes. But she, she had known that it's not the body of Christ because she also received Holy Communion. Right. Right. She explained to me this. Right. And she complained. And so I had to console her. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another time she took this uh, only blessed bread in a paper uh, home. It is also possible. And then she consumed this holy bread ho in, in the, her home, and the paper remained. Yes. And then she phoned me and asked me what I can do with this paper. The paper touched the holy bread. It is, it is holy. And I cannot throw, uh, throw the paper in the garbage. Right. And she said to me, I will burn this out of reverence. And this is an attitude of an uh, orthodox believer towards only a blessed bread, right. not towards the body of Christ. Right. What will this pious lady say when she will observe as how we treat our Lord right. in the communion in hand? Right. I certainly remember when uh, I first saw it introduced, when it was still illicit, the ideology was that uh, we are adults and not children, so we should receive the Eucharist, the way adults receive food and feed themselves. Yes. So that was, that was also part of the ideology, at least in some areas here in the United yes. States. Yes, but our Lord Jesus Christ said, unless you become a child, you will not enter in the kingdom of heaven. Right. Our Lord did not say, unless you become adult, mm 